continuations of uh, rest management page 52 to 194 paragraph 4.6 plan risk response the plan risk response process determines the effective response action that are appropriate for the priority of the individual risk and for the overall risk this process takes into account the stakeholder risk attitude and the conventions specified in the risk management plan in addition to any constraint and assumptions that were determined when the risk were identified and analyzed once individual risk has been prioritized appropriate risk response are developed for both threat and opportunities this process continues until the optimal set of responses has been developed the range of possible responses exist for both threat and opportunities five responses may be considered for dealing with threat one escalate avoid transfer mitigate and accept escalate escalation is appropriate when threat is outside of the portfolio program or project scope or when that proposed response exceed a given manager's authority escalated risks are managed at the enterprise domain portfolio domain program domain or other relevant parts of organization ownership of escalated threat is accepted by the relevant party in an organization a threat is usually escalated to the appropriate level that matches the objectives that would be effective if the threat occurred avoid avoid risk avoidance is when the portfolio program or project team act to eliminate the threat or protect activity from risk impact it may be appropriate for a higher authority threat with a high probability of occurrence and a large negative impact avoidance may involve changing some aspects of the management plan or changing the objectives that is jeopardy in order to eliminate the threat impact entirely should the risk materialize it would have no effect with respect to the objectives the risk owner may also take action to isolate the objectives from the risk impact if it is where it to occur transfer transfer involves shifting responsibility of a threat to a third party to make to manage the risk and to bear the impact of the threat occur risk transfer often involves payment of risk premium to the party taking on the threat mitigate mitigate in the risk mitigation action is taken to reduce the probability of occurrence and or impact of the threat early mitigation action is often more effective than trying to repair the damage often the threat has occurred where it is not possible to reduce probability a mitigation response might reduce the impact by targeting factors that drives the severity accept accept rest acceptance acknowledge the existence of threat but no proactive action is taken this strategy may be appropriate for low priority threat and it may be also be used where it is not possible or cost effective to address a threat in any other way acceptance can be either active or passive the most common active acceptance strategy is to establish contingency reserve including amount of time money or other resources to handle the threat if it is occur passive acceptance involves no proactive action apart from periodic review of the threat to ensure that it does not change significantly five responses may be considered for dealing with opportunities escalate the risk response strategy is appropriate when an opportunity is outside the portfolio program or project scope or when the proposed response exceed a given manager's authority escalated opportunities are managed at the program domain portfolio domain or other relevant parts of the organization it is important that the ownership of an escalated opportunity is accepted by the relevant party in the organization opportunities are usually escalated to the right level that match the objectives that would be affected if the opportunity occurred 
exploit the exploit strategy may be selected for high priority opportunities where the organization wants to ensure that the opportunity is realized. This is strategy seek to capture the benefits associated with a particular opportunity by ensuring that this definitely happens, increasing the probability of occurrence to 100%. Share. Sharing involves transferring ownership of an opportunity to the third party so that the third party shares some of the benefits of the opportunity occur. It is important to carefully select the new owner of shared opportunity to ensure capture of the opportunity of the benefits of the portfolio, program, or project. Risk sharing often involves payment of the risk premium to the party taking on the opportunity. Enhance the strategy is used to increase the probability and or impact of an opportunity. Early enhancement action is often more effective than trying to improve the benefits after the opportunity has occurred. The probability of occurrence of an opportunity may be increased by focusing attention on its causes where it is possible, where it is not possible to increase probability. An enhancement response might increase the impact by targeting factors that drive the size of the potential benefits. Accept Accepting an opportunity acknowledge its existence, but no proactive action is taken. This strategy may be appropriate for low priority opportunities and it may also adapt where it is not possible or cost effective to address the opportunity in any other way. Acceptance can be either active or passive. The most common active acceptance strategy is to establish a contingency reserve including amount of time, money, and other resources to take advantage of the opportunity if it is occurred. Passive acceptance involves no proactive action apart from periodic review of the opportunity to ensure that it does not change significantly. Responses are planned at the general. So five response may be considered escalate, exploit, share, enhance, and accept. Responses are planned at the general strategic level at the strategy is validated and agreed prior to developing the detailed tactical approach. Once that is accomplished, the responses are explained into action at the tactical level and integrated into the relevant management plan. This activity may generate additional secondary risk which need to be addressed at this time. In addition to the individual risk response action may be taken to response to overall portfolio program or project risk. All response strategies and action are documented and communicated to key stakeholder and incorporated into the relevant plan. 4.6.1 Purpose of Plan Risk Response The purpose of the plan risk response processes is to determine the set of action that provides the highest chance of success while complying the applicable constraint. Once risk has been identified, analyzed, and prioritized plan are developed to addressing every risk that our team considered to be sufficiently important either because of the threat it possesses to the objectively or the opportunity it offers. The plan describes the agreed action to be taken and the potential change that this action might cause. Risk response when implemented can have potential effect on the objectives and such and as such can generate additional risk. These are known as secondary risk and are analyzed and planned for a for in the same way as those risks that were initially identified. This may be residual risk that remain after the responses are implemented. These residual risk are clearly identified, analyzed, documented and communicated to all relevant stakeholders until they are satisfied. 4.6.2 Key Success Factor for Plan Risk Responses Success in achieving the objective of the plan risk response process includes, but not limited to, clearly defined risk-related rules and responsibilities, specify the timing of the risk response, provide resource, budget, and schedule of response, address the interactions of risk and response, taking into account secondary and residual risk, ensure appropriate, timely, effective, and agreed response, and address both threat and opportunities. 4.7 Implement Risk Responses 
Once the planning of risk responses is now complete, all of the approved and conditional response action is included and defined in the relevant management plan. This action may be delegated to action owner as appropriate to the risk owner monitoring actions to determine their effectiveness and to identify any secondary risk that may arise because of the implementations of risk responses. The risk owner and the risk action owner are brief on any change that may affect their responsibilities. Effective communications are maintained between the risk owner and the portfolio program or project managers so that the designated stakeholder accept accountability for controlling the potential outcomes of a specific risk, be apply their best effort to track the associated trigger condition, and say carry out the agreed response in the timely manner. In addition to the response action, and trigger condition, a mechanism for measuring and effectiveness of the response is provided as part of the risk response planning. The risk action owner keeps the risk owner aware of the status of response action. The risk owner then decides whether the risk has been effectively dealt with or whether additional action need to be planned and implemented. This ensures that the agreed action are carried out within the normal portfolio program or project execution frameworks. 4.7.1 Purpose of Implement Risk Responses The objective of the Implement Risk Responses process is to carry out the agreed risk response action so the risk occur. Proper attention to the Implement Risk Response process helps to ensure that the agreed risk response are executed accordingly. 4.7.2 Key Success Factor for Implement Risk Responses Success in achieving the objectives of the Implement Risk Response processes includes but not limited to A. A risk owner is accountable for its risk. B. Stakeholder committed to implementing risk responses according to plan. C. Effective communication management is used. D. Cost of the risk response is determined and calculated as part of the planning. And D. Contingency and management reserves are made available. 4.8 Monitor Risk Paragraph 4.8 The monitor risk process enables the portfolio program or project management team to reevaluate the status of the previous identified risk to identify emergent, secondary, and residual risk and to determine the effectiveness of the risk management processes. The portfolio program or project involvement may change as some risks occur, whether foreseen or unforeseen, and other risks become or cease to be relevant. The management team ensures that the planning documents are kept current as additional information becomes available. Periodic risk reassessment is using the risk management life cycle is repeated at reasonable interval or in response to relevant event. In the event of major organizational change, risk management planning may need to be revisited prior to performing risk assessment. In addition to regular status review, periodic risk audit are performed to determine strengths and weaknesses in handling risk within the portfolio, program, or project that entails identifying any barriers to effectively. The key to success in risk management and recognitions of which could help to improve risk management of the current or future portfolios, program, or project. At the end of the program or project, an integrated analysis of the risk management process is carried out with a focus on long-term process improvement. This analysis consolidates the finding of the periodic unit to identify lessons learned, lessons that are applicable to the large pro proportions of the organization, future programs or projects such as appropriate level of risk resources, adequate time for the analysis, use of tools, level of details. The result of the risk management process audit is consolidated with the specific information with respect to the experience of risk in the portfolio program or project. The results are highlighted and potential actions are proposed 
for applying them in the future. This includes any generally applicable guidelines for the organization and the result can lead to an update of the corresponding organizational process assets. 4.8.1 Purpose of Monitor Risk The primary objectives of the monitor risk process are to track identified risk and maintain viability of response plan in addition to tracking the managing the risk response action the effectiveness of all of the risk management process are periodically reviewed to provide improvement to the management of the current work as well as future work with an activity such as lesson learn for each risk or set of risk for which a contingent response has been defined the corresponding set of trigger condition are specified it is the responsibility of the risk owner to ensure that these conditions are effectively monitored and that the corresponding actions are carried out as defined in the timely manner. 4.8.2 Clause 4.8.2 Key Success Factors for Monitoring Risk Key success factor related to maintaining risk awareness throughout the life cycle includes but not limited to integrated risk monitoring, continuous monitoring of risk trigger condition, and maintaining risk awareness. Chapter 5, Risk Management in the Context of the Portfolio Management The purpose of the risk management within the portfolio domain is to secure efficient and effective value delivery, which is pursued through the realizations of the organization's strategic objectives it is achieved by the combining the management of opportunities and threat. At the portfolio level, risk management takes into account the entire organizational frameworks. A portfolio is the collections of project, program, subsidiary portfolios, and operation managed as a group to achieve strategic objectives. Risk management in the portfolio domain ensure that all over components implements effective processes to manage the entire risk management life cycle. One of the main goals of portfolio management is to build a risk efficient portfolio where the organization choose to take an appropriate amount of risk within the portfolio in order to achieve the required value in overall organizational strategy. This is achieved by adding or removing portfolio components based on their contributions to the overall risk exposure and strategic value. Clause 5.1 Portfolio Risk Management Life Cycle The life cycle of risk management as described in Section 4 generally applies to portfolio management. However, there are numbers of additional considerations to the corresponding processes that needs to be taken into account in the next context. Paragraph 5.1.1 Portfolio Risk Identification Risk identification at the portfolio level is focused on the A, identifying the risk that have an impact on the delivery of the expected business performance and B, the uh, ability of organizations to implement its strategy and achieve its strategic objectives. There are two levels of risk, strategic risk and tactical risk. The two level strategic risk is strategic risk are risk identified directly to the portfolio level and treasured by portfolio activities. Strategic risk includes activities related to the generations of business performance by the portfolio components and those having an impact on the ability of the organization to achieve its strategic objectives. Tactical risk. Tactical risk are risk identified either by management processes at the portfolio level or escalated from the portfolio components. Risk that can impact portfolio components typically include the following category. Changing business needs, environment or context. Availability of resources. Interaction between components and conflicting components objectives. 5.1.2 Clause 5.1.2 Portfolio Risk Qualitative and Quantitative Analysis The evaluations of risk at the portfolio level is performed by taking into the account 
and impact of risk on the realizations of the expected business performance or the executions of the organizational strategy. One of the reasons this analysis are conducted is to evaluate whether the level of impact can be contained within the scope of the portfolio manager's accountability. When the impact effect the portfolio business performance or strategic objectives, then the impact of the typically address at the portfolio level in an operational manner when the impact affect the ability of the organization to the execute the strategy and realize the intended value. The risk and responsibility to respond to the risk is escalated to the higher governance level. Clause 5.1.3 Portfolio Risk Response Strategy in portfolio risk response, in portfolio risk management, the focus of risk response is oriented towards exploiting business opportunities and maximizing value creations for the organization and its stakeholder. It goes beyond threatening threat, which in the portfolio domain are merely limitations to action. Portfolio management also includes responding to risk escalated by its components in order to ensure that these are effectively and efficiently addressed at the appropriate level. In principle, of all potential responses listed in Section 4.6 can be used when responding to risk at the portfolio level. The risk response strategies developed at the portfolio level consist of the activities documented in the portfolio risk management plan. In addition, some responses are developed as a result of escalation from the com competent components level. These activities are budgeted accordingly and funded from the relevant sources. Example of relevant funding sources are the portfolio or components budget for preventive responses, relevant contingency reserve for handling occurrences of known risk or management reserve for handling unforeseen risk related issue. Risk response can be planned as additional portfolio components such as project program, subsidiary portfolios, or elements of the portfolio government frameworks. These components are aimed to maximizing business performance or enhancing the executions of organization strategy to achieve the strategic objectives. In some cases, the risk response can also lead to the removal of components from the portfolio. Paragraph 5.1.4, Implementing Portfolio Risk Response. The implementations of risk response within the portfolio includes triggering response as they have been defined in the portfolio risk management plan transferring in corresponding budget from the contingency reserve into budget at completion and updating the portfolio baseline accordingly. The risk response plan as new components become parts of the portfolio and are subject to the applications of the standard portfolio delivery and deployment processes. Any formally approved risk response problem the risk response becomes an integral part of the portfolio management plan. The implementations of such a response is not a change to the portfolio that is initiated through the formal portfolio change management procedure. However, any new response plan to address emergent risk becomes part of the portfolio change management procedure. 5.1.5 Monitoring Portfolio Risk Monitoring the risk at the portfolio level is both a tactical and a strategic activity described as follow. So tactical activity and a strategic activity. Tactical activity oversees the aspect related to the executions of the anticipated and responsive action undertaken to response to identified risk. Also include ensure that operational risk or systematic risk that could impact the portfolio are properly handled. A strategic activity address the evolutions of the risk characteristic of each portfolio components, the overall portfolio risk profile, and the impact of the evolutions of business performance. The focus is on development and implementations of the organizational strategy and the achievement of the strategic objectives. These risk profiles are regularly analyzed in order to identify any potential trend that might indicated, indicate new risk or the inefficiency 
or ineffectiveness of the response strategy. So, tactical activity and strategic activity. The monitor of the risk response is conducted according to the quantitative parameter and the use of qualitative assessment. These risk response are intended to be effective at treating the specific risk they are addressing in order to enhance or maintain in realizations of the expected business performance and the executions of organizational strategy. The qualitative assessment is performed by revising the risk analysis to ensure these plans are efficient and effective. Monitoring risk at the portfolio level includes ensuring the risk-related elements of the governance frameworks are properly implemented by the portfolio pro com components and are effective. 5.2, clause 5.2, integrations of risk management into the portfolio management performance domain. In order to achieve the portfolio objectives, there are a number of risk management practices that can be applied across the portfolio life cycle within all of the performance domains, say figure 5-1. These practices typically cover the area shown in table 5-1. So in table in figure 5 that's one portfolio management performance domain. So portfolio governance, portfolio capacity and capability management, portfolio stakeholder engagement, portfolio value management, portfolio risk management, portfolio strategic management, portfolio governance. So initiation, initiation, planning, execution, optimization. So this is the performance drawing, performance domain of portfolio life cycle, one, two, three, four, five, six, six portfolio processes. Table five, that's one area of the portfolio management performance domain typically covered by risk management practices. Performance domain, example, portfolio strategic management. Areas covered by risk management practice is alignment alignment with the organization and risk attitude and a strategy quality of the organization strategy impact of strategic changes within the organization interpretations of the portfolio mission vision strategic goals and objectives impact of external opportunities and threat another performance domain is portfolio governance the area covered by risk management practice is portfolio governance structures, policies, and procedure, assignment of individuals to key governance rules, risk-based audit, use of audit report. Another performance domain is portfolio capacity and capability management. Area covered by risk management practices are impact of portfolio on other activities in the organization impact of the other activities of the organization key human financial and intellectual cap capital availability and fit for use of the key assets capacity required to manage risk impact of the organizational culture structure and key processes capacity of the partners and suppliers use of performance report impact of portfolio optimizations on value delivery Another performance domain is per portfolio stakeholder engagement. Area covered by risk management practices are method of stakeholder identification, categorizations, and analysis. Attitude of key portfolio stakeholder, interactions and conflict of interest, ways of engaging stakeholders, scope channels, technique, and frequency of communications. Another performance domain is a portfolio value management. <clears throat> Areas covered by risk management practice are opportunities to increase value delivery, trend in portfolio environment, alignment of value targets at risk attitude, impact of components risk on value delivery, approach to the expected value negotiation. Another performance domain is example of portfolio risk management and the area covered by risk management practice are risk management approach, general portfolio risk, 
cumulative effect of components risk risk escalation policies 5.2.1 the the essence of portfolio strategic management is to ensure the enhancement of exploitations of strategic opportunities and the evidence of mitigations of threat that could potentially prevent the organization from achieving its full potential Therefore, risk management in the context of portfolio strategic management focus on the identifications and active management of those opportunities and threat that potentially have substantial impact on the realizations of the organizational strategy. 5.2.2 Portfolio Governance The purpose of portfolio governance is to ensure that the portfolio is managed in an appropriate way this includes meeting the legal, regulatory, and organizational governance requirements. The role of risk management within portfolio governance is to use the organizational potential to a efficiently secure adequate governance and management practice and be avoid or mitigate threat that could lead to misconduct or ineffective management of the portfolio. 5.2.3 Portfolio Capacity and Capability Management Risk management in the context of portfolio capacity and capability management focus on the mutual impact of the portfolio and related operations. In addition, risk management in the context of capacity and capability management ensures the proper use and development of capital and assets entrusted to the portfolio manager for the components, programs, and projects. 5.2.4 Portfolio Stakeholder Engagement Key stakeholders at the portfolio level typically include executive leaders and managers of the organization and their equivalent in the key partner suppliers and customer organization. Another key group stakeholder is the components manager from the respective portfolio risk management focus on the opportunities to increase effectiveness and realizing the organization's strategy and be a threat that could potentially lower the ability to do so. 5.2.5 Portfolio Value Management Portfolio Value Management focus on ensuring that the investment of portfolio components leads to the delivery of expected value risk management in the context focuses on a maximizing opportunities to increase value delivered and b corresponding to threat that could potentially lower the value of probability of lower delivery by point two point six portfolio risk management portfolio risk management focus on ensuring that risk at the portfolio and its components level is recognized and managed effectively it is achieved through risk management and risk governance practice because these practices are essential for dealing with uncertainty of the portfolio level. They are also analyzed from the risk perspective adequate measure are then taken to ensure that the applications of risk management is robust and effective. Chapter 6 Risk Management in the context of the program management the purpose of risk management within the program domain is to secure optimal realizations of program benefits. This purpose is to achieve by combining the management of opportunities and threat. One of the key characteristics of the program is complexity and risk management address this aspect. Risk management practice within a program use opportunities to reduce complexity and address threat that occur as a result of complexity. Program consists of related project subsidiary program and project activities managed in a co coordinated manner to obtain benefits not available from managing them individually. Risk management ensure that all of these components have effective processes to manage the entire risk management life cycle. 6.1 Program Risk Management Life Cycle the life cycle of risk management, as described in Section 4, generally applies to program management. 
However, there are the numbers of additional considerations for the corresponding processes that need to be taken into account in this context. 6.1.1 Program Risk Identification Risk identification at the program level focus on identifying the risk that could have an impact on the delivery of the expected benefits. It also focuses on the availability of the organization to take over and use the result of the components that are parts of the program scope. There are three levels where risk relevant to the program can be identified. A. Risk as a cascading from the portfolio or enterprise level that can affect the achievements of project program, achievement of program objectives. B. Risk identification directly at the program level and triggered from the program activities, their independencies and activities related to the integrations of the components result to generate the expected benefits and risk escalate from the program components. The program domain risk are identified from their operational and contextual perspective. There are two, operational risk and contextual risk. Operational risk is a risk that at the operational level are those risks directly triggered by program activities such as integrations of the result of the project and the related transition, change management, and triggered of the operational activities. In addition, some operational risk may result from the escalations from the components risk when these risks have an impact that expand beyond the perimeters of accountability of the components, managers, or their specific budget. Contextual risk. Contextual risk are those risks resulting from the strategic and organizational environment of the program, from the stakeholder, and variations in the strategy or the evolutions of the business environment or program business case. Some contextual risk can also be escalated from the program components when their impact and threat exceed the boundary of accountability of the components managers. Some risks identified at the program level or escalated from the project may need to be escalated to the enterprise or portfolio domain. These are the risks that have an impact on the business and operational performance generated through the exploitations of the business capabilities created by the program. Escalated risks follow the same processes of analysis as other risks identified at the program level, see section 6.1.2. 6.1.2 Program Risk, Qualitative and Quantitative Analysis Evaluations of the risk of the program label is performed by taking into account the deep of its risk impact on the realizations of expected benefits or the development of the expected organizational capability. The aim of this analysis is to evaluate whether or not the impact can be contained within the limits of the program budget. When the impact affects the ability of the program to deliver its benefits or organizational capabilities, then the risk is addressed at the program level. When the impact affects the ability of the organizations to deliver the performance and value expected to be obtained from the benefits and capabilities created by the program, then the risk at its treatment are escalated to the enterprise or portfolio domain. In addition, the risk and its treatment are escalated when the risk effect and expected financial and operational performance anticipated from the new capabilities beyond the agreed threshold. 6.1.3 Program Risk Response Strategy In principles, all potential responses listed in Section 4.6 may be used when responding to risk at the program level. Strategic development and program level to deal with the risk consists of the activities agreed to in the risk management plan and budgeted for the program budget or contingency reserve. Some of these responses are also developed as a result of escalation from the component level. This risk response consists of adding program activities or components updating the program baselines or removing components from the program. These new components are intended to maximize the creations of further business benefits or further enhance the development of organizational capabilities. Alternatively, 
the intent maybe to maintain or reinforce the contributions of the program to achieve relative strategic objectives or minimize threat to the organization's objectives and strategy. 6.1.4 Implementing Program Risk Response Implementation of risk response within the program consists of a triggering the risk response as they have been defined in the risk management plan b transferring the corresponding budget from the reserve into the budget at completion and c updating the program baseline accordingly when new components are added they become parts of a regular program scope and because of the applications of the standard program delivery and deployment process implementations of risk response at the components level is aligned and perform in coordination with the response that are implemented in the program domain any formally approved risk response becomes an integral part of the program management plan the implementations of an approved risk response is not a change to the program that is initiated through the formal program change management procedure However, any new response plan to address emergent risk become part of the program change management procedure. 6.1.5 Monitoring Program Risk Monitoring the risk at the program level is both tactical and strategic activity. Tactical activity and strategic activity. Tactical activity oversees the aspect related to the executions of the anticipated and responsive action undertaken to respond to identified risk. A strategic activity address the evolutions of risk characteristic of each program components individually, the overall program risk profile and the impact of the evolutions of the business benefits or organizational capabilities it is intended to generate. This risk profile are regularly analyzed in order to identify any potential trend that indicates new risk or the inefficiency of ineffectiveness of the response strategy. The monitoring of the risk response is conducted according to their quantitative and qualitative parameters as defined in the management plan with considerations of the overall impact from the components to the enterprise level. This risk response are intended to be effective in treating the respective specific risk and contribute to the enhancing or maintaining the realizations of expected benefits. It is important to perform a qualitative risk assessment to ensure that the risk response are efficient and effective. Monitoring risk at the program level also includes ensuring that risk-related elements of the government frameworks are properly implemented by the program's components, managers, and that they are effective. 6.2 Integrations of Risk Management into the Program Management There are a number of risk management practices that can be applied across the program life cycle within all of the performance domain in order to achieve their objectives. See figure 6 does 1. These practices typically cover the areas of shown in 6.1. Figure 6 does 1 program management performance domain. So, in that top program strategy alignment, the center is program life cycle management left and the left is a program governance the right is the program benefits management and the bottom of program life life cycle management is the program stakeholder engagement <clears throat> six that's one area of the program management performance domain typically covered by risk management practices Performance domain, the program strategy alignment. The area covered by risk management practice are program business case, program risk management approach, environmental assessment. The program benefits management, the area covered by risk management is the program objectives, opportunities for new benefits, efficiency and effectiveness of benefits realization, sustainability of program benefits. The program Program stakeholder engagement, the area covered by risk management practice are method of stakeholder identification, categorization, analysis, attitudes of the key program stakeholder, 
interactions and conflict of interest, ways of engaged stakeholder, scope, channel, technique, and frequency of communication. The another performance domain is program governance. The area covered by risk management practice are program governance, structure, policies, and procedure, assignment of individual stocky governance rules, program complexity, risk escalation policies, effectiveness of risk management. Another is the program life cycle management. The area covered by risk management practice are program definition, peace activity, components authorizations and planning, components oversight and integration, components transition. 6.2.1 program strategy alignment. Program strategy alignment ensure that a program contributes to organizational strategy in the expected way. Risk management effort in this domain address new strategy opportunities and threat. When necessary, this effort leads to appropriate program definition or changes in the relevant program components. 6.2.2 program benefits management. Program benefits management ensure that the program benefits described in the business case and other program governance documents are successfully realized. The main focus of the risk management in this area is to A, manage opportunities that could increase these benefits, B, deliver opportunities more efficiently, and C, manage threat that could potentially jeopardize the program effort and realize its benefits. 6.2.3 Program Stakeholder Engagement Key stakeholder from the program respective typically includes program governance, board member, the program manager, manager of program components, partner, key supplier, and regulators, regulators impacting or being impacted by the program benefits. From this perspective, program risk management focus on opportunities for increasing effectiveness and realizing program benefits and on minimizing threat that could potentially lower the ability to do so. It is realized by effective engaging of the stakeholder at the program level and ensure consistency of the stakeholder management strategies among program components. 6.2.4 Program Governance Program Governance use the framework functions and processes by which the program is monitored, managed, and supported in order to meet organizational strategy. The operational goal program governance Program governance also address program complexity in an effort to reduce it. These activities are backed by risk management practices focused on in the analysis of various governance approach from the risk perspective. In addition, the risk of the individual to perform key governance rules is supported by risk analysis. The key elements of program governance from the risk management perspective is the risk escalation process which is integrated with processes within components and backed by program governance processes and structured. 6.2.5 Program Life Cycle Management Program Life Cycle Management ensure that program definition, delivery, and closure activities are effectively managed. This is accomplished to ensure program benefits are realized using the right set of components in the right sequence and with adherence to the program business case and other governance document. Risk management is this area focused on identifying and addressing program risk level as early as possible. This is achieved by fully integrating risk identification analysis and response planning throughout the program and components activities. 6.2.6 .6, Supporting Program Activities even though the management of program level activities often differs significantly from the components level risk management processes for the supporting program activities are similar in nature to the components project program governance established policies on risk management between the program and its components including escalation mechanism this includes that there are no gaps between the components of program level that are not covered by risk management practices Chapter 7, Risk Management in the Context of the Project Management. 
The purpose of risk management within the project domain is to support the optimal delivery of the project result leading to the realizations of benefits for which the project was undertaken. In addition, risk management helps to ensure that delivery of this result occurs within identified project constraint project are aim to creating a unique product service or result project risk are triggered by uncertainty in some of the operational activities and enterprise environmental factor project success is assessed and evaluated based upon the ability to deliver intangible outcomes therefore risk that are managed at the project level are evaluated and considered according to their potential impact on the ability to deliver a tangible outcome. The evaluations and analysis of risk are focused at the tactical level and every other considerations in terms of impact on expected value or benefits creation is scalated to the portfolio or program governance level. Project team needs to have visibility into the strategic objectives that leads to its authorization. This allows for the effective, proactive project management and reporting of key opportunities and threats that could potentially impact the objectives. 7.1 Project Risk Management Life Cycle The life cycle of risk management is described on Section 4 generally applies to project management However, there are a number of additional considerations of the corresponding processes that needs to be taken into account in this context. 7.1.1 Project Risk Identification Identifications of risk at the project level is based on operational and contextual input. Operational input comes from the activities of the project itself. Among this input are project scoop statement. There are a number of risks escalated to the specifications and agreed method of delivery of product, services, and other results that are expected to be delivered by the project. Project life cycle. Regardless of the project, regardless of the life cycle selected, the life cycle itself introduces a number of risks. Work breakdown structure WB is activity list or backlog. There are a number of risks directly connected to the decomposition of the rest of the project work are triggered by its execution. Estimates. Estimates are performed in terms of time, cost, effort, and resources. The target accuracy of the estimate is the level of risk tolerated for that estimate. Dependencies and sequence of work. Interdependencies and the resulting sequence of work are sources of risk, especially attention, is paid to critical path and external dependencies created by the sharing of resources with other projects. If the critical path changes during the project life cycle, the criticality of the risk related to the elements on the critical path may also be dynamic. Procurement plan subcontracting parts of the project scope may be an action of risk transfer but it may be also trigger in your risk. Change request. Each time of change is implemented within the project. It may eliminate certain risk, but also trigger new ones. Historical data based on past experience. It is important to identify this thematic risk and automate their treatment. Contextual risk result from the considerations of Enterprise environmental factor and other strategic or organizational aspects shaping the environment of the project, such as stakeholder analysis and business case. Stakeholder analysis, all key stakeholders can bring a number of opportunities to be exploited. However, when handled inadequately, they may be introduced threat that need to be mitigated. Business case, the business case often implies a factor of profitability or positive return on investment that are exposed to a certain level of uncertainty or risk. The ability to achieve the sustained benefits after project completion is part of risk identification. Risk impacting the realizations of benefits can be addressed during project execution. Program or portfolio governance level success factor. 
This factor may vary over time and change the priority level of the project within the project or portfolio. Enterprise environmental factor, a factor such as a strategy or organization, its structure or dynamic of its business environment and the variability of its regulation and involvement environment are triggered of risk that directly impact the project. 7.1.2 Qualitative and Quantitative Project Risk Analysis The evaluations of risk at the project level is performed by taking into account the degree of impact on the project objectives and probability of occurrence. The purpose of this analysis is to evaluate whether or not the impact can be contained within the limit of the project budget and the boundary of accountability of the project managers. Risk that have been impact evaluated and as containable within the limit of accountability of the project manager and team are dealt with the project risk management plan and strategy. Every risk and impact that exceed the limit of accountability is escalated to the propagate governance level when the impact of the risk is determined to be containable within the limit of the project budget and accountability of the project manager and team it is addressed to the project level if the risk impact the ability of the organization to obtain or sustain the expected benefit then the risk and its treatment are escalated to the appropriate governance level. Project Risk Response Strategies In principles of all potential response listed in Section 4.6 can be used when responding to risk at the project level. The strategies developed to deal with risk at the project level consist of activities guided by the risk management plan budgeted accordingly and funded by the Project Contingency Reserve. Risk responses consist of initial activities of work packages to update the project baseline or remove activities from this same baseline. Whenever the project is part of the program or is managed as part of portfolio escalation of risk to the higher governance level is always one of the responses. Escalation increase the effectiveness or efficiency or dealing with a specific risk that impact the program or portfolio or with risk that requires funding in excess of contingency reserve. 7.1.4 Implementing Project Risk Responses The implementations of risk response within the project is performed according to the risk management plan uses the corresponding budget from the reserve into the budget and update the project baseline accordingly. Together, these activities become parts of regular project scope and are subject to the applications of project execution processes. The implementation of risk response plan is not initiated throughout the formal project change management procedure. A risk response is part of the project management plan and does not require a formal change control process because it it has already been approved as part of risk management plan. 7.1.5 Monitoring Project Risk Monitoring risk at the project level consists of checking the status of the risk that have already been identified, verifying whether any known risk has not occurred or it's not um, about to occur and Monitoring the status of all action implemented to respond to the detections of occurrence of risk. These activities typically lead to update of plan register and controlling documents. In addition, performance reports are regularly analyzed in order to identify any potential threat that could indicate new risk or the ineffectiveness or of response strategies. The risk response implemented to anticipate and prevent occurrence or threat or exploit and enhance the opportunities are conducted according to their quant 
quantitative parameter of time, cost, scope, and specification. A qualitative assessment evaluates the effectiveness and efficiency of rest treatment for a specific rest that have occurred. 7.0 Integration of Risk Management into the Project Management Process Group. A guide to the project management body of knowledge PM book describe the project risk management knowledge area. An analysis to the relationship between the process and project risk management and other knowledge area is provided next. There are a number of general risk management practices that can be applied across the project life cycle. The following section summarize these practices in a general way as they relate to the process group and knowledge area shown in Table 7-1. Table 7-1 area of the project management process group and knowledge area typically covered by the risk management practices. Project management process group. Initiating process group, planning process group, executing process group, monitoring and control process group, closing process group. A knowledge area is a project integration management, project scope management, project schedule management, project cost management, project quality management, project resource management, project communication management, project risk management, project procurement management, project stakeholder management. In the initiating process group, high impact risk setting objectives and general scope selections of life cycle. In the stakeholder management area, identification and categorization approach, risk attitude of stakeholder, conflict of interest. In the planning process group, integrity of planning processes, quality of data, scope and requirements management approach, decomposition approach, Schedule management approach, estimation, financing, cost management, estimation, quality management approach, and metrics, process improvement, resource management approach, estimation, communication approach, scope, and frequency, risk attitude, risk management approach, adaptations of life cycle, integrations with the other process, project plans, tolerance, secondary and residual risk. Procurement management approach, contract type, engagement strategies. In executing process group, delivery processes, risk-related knowledge transfer, use of lesson learned and historical data, quality culture, resource acquisition, team development, development and management, communication channel and technique, accountability for the risk management processes, Accountability for the response implementation, selections criteria negotiation approach, consistency of strategy, execution. For the monitoring and controlling process group, integrity of control, risk related to all changes, validation approach, control approach, use of work performance data, control approach, use to work performance data, control approach, use of work performance data, control approach use of work performance data. So we, control approach use performance data is from project scope management until project risk management. Monitoring approach use performance data, continuous improvement risk management. Supplier capacity control approach use of work performance data. Monitoring approach use of work performance data in closing process group result transition sustainability of benefits. So that is a 7 1 area of project management process group of knowledge area typically covered by risk management processes. Chapter 7.2.1 Initiating processes. Initiating processes are performed to define a new project or new piece of an existing project obtaining authorization to start a project or piece and essential parts of the work is related to understanding the high level risk that might impact the realizations of objectives specified in the business case. It is essential to address this risk prior to authorizing the project or piece during project initiation the selections of the appropriate project life cycle is one of the first decision reported by the risk management. Each of the knowledge project life cycle has 
an impact of all areas of project management by helping to enhance the exploit opportunities or introducing a number of threats. Another important aspect of risk management during project initiation is to understand the risk related to key stakeholder, their interest and potential conflict among them and with the project. 7.2.2 planning processes. Planning processes establish the scope of the project, refine the objective, and define the course of action required to attain the objective that the project was undertaken to achieve. The selections of the overall risk management approach is one of the key planning decisions. It involves the analysis of risk that could potentially impact the effectiveness of the risk management processes. The key areas of the planning that also includes risk management practices are integrity of the planning processes and the resulting plans, selections of the management approach in all knowledge areas relevant to the project and estimation activities. It is typical that processes in the process group lead to identifications of the high numbers of risk because these processes includes analytical work necessary for planning. It is important to ensure the risk identification become a natural part of every processes in this process group. 7.2.3 Executing Processes Executing processes are performed to complete the project the work defined in the project management plan to satisfy the project requirements and achieve the objectives of the project. Successful risk management depends on the flow of knowledge within the project and the organizations involved in its execution. Risk management practices are most effective when supported by the culture that embraces proactive behavior, open communication, organizational learning, and continuous improvement. This means that integrations with team building and management quality management executions of stakeholder engagement strategies and communication processes are essential. 7.2.4 Monitoring and Controlling Processes Monitoring and controlling processes track, review, and regulates the progress and performance of the project, identify the area in which chains of the plan are required and initiate the corresponding changes. Risk management supports effort to ensure integrity and reliability of reporting. On the other hand, risk identification, risk analysis, and risk monitoring processes use the performance data and information as key input that helps identify, analyze, and monitor risk. 7.2.5 Closing Processes Closing processes are performed to formally complete and close the project piece or contract. Where risk and management is concerned, parts of their closing processes practices involve securing knowledge that may be useful in future project piece, project, or other activities of the organization. The remaining known risk that could impact the realizations of benefits and handed over prior to project closure. Appendix X1, Development of the Standard for Risk Management in Portfolios, Program, and Project. The Practice Standard of Project Risk Management was published in 2009. Its purpose was to, to provide a standard to project management practitioner and other project stakeholder that defines the aspect of project risk management organized as good practice on most projects most of the time, and B, provide a standard that is globally applicable and consistently applied. The practice standard of project risk management covered risk management for the single project section 11 of a guide to the project management body of knowledge PM book, fourth edition form basis of practice standard project management, like a practices standard, did not cover risk for polio's program. In 2017, recognizing the risk management is a major consideration of portfolio and program as well as the project. The PMI standard program team is PT, which includes the PMI standard manager and the standards member advisory group. 
Charter Development Principles based on Standard Risk Management and Portfolio Program and Project. In addition to addressing risk in the purview, there are PMI Foundation Standard PM Book Guide, the Standard Program Management, and the Standard Portfolio Management, the Charter directly from the project team to identify the core principles and practices of risk management, describe the fundamental of risk management, and write the standard to reflect current accepted risk management good practices. The project team formed to the fall of 2017. It consists of the eight PMI volunteer led by Gary Sekma, committee chair, and David Ross, vice chair. In addition to the expanding of the scope risk management to cover portfolio program and project as directed by the charter, and the project team submitted recommendations to PMI lexicon team to enhance risk-related definition to include three domains. The first draft of the standard was completed in 12 of March 2018 and distributed the subject matter expert to review the comments based on the SMA comment and document was revised and released to the Protectional Committee on July 2, 2018 as the public exposure draft. The committee revised the draft and submitted the final draft and summary report to the public exposure draft actions to the PMI standard consensus body of approval leading subsequent of publication. Appendix X to contributors and reviewer of the standard for risk management and portfolio program. The project management institute is grateful to all of this individual for their support and acknowledge this outstanding contribution to the project management profession. X 2.1 the standard for risk management in portfolio program and project core committee. The, the following individual are member of the core committee responsible for drafting the standard includes publications of reviewer Gary Jesikwa, PMP, PMIACP chair, PMP program vice chairman David W. Ross, Gary Dakan, PMRMP, PMP, Christopher Edward, MBE. PMP, Nikki Cons, PMP, RMP, RMP, Oliver Lazar, RMI, RMP, Program Management, <coughs> Joko Salaiko, CISA, PMP, <coughs> with two PhD program, PA, Program Management. Three, Portfolio Risk Management Control. Appendix X3. X3.1, the purpose of portfolio risk management control. A portfolio is a collection of project programs, subsidiary portfolio, and operations managed as a group to achieve strategic objective at the portfolio level project program and operations are aligned with the organization's investment strategy to assure achievements and strategic objective through the portfolio operation. The focus of the portfolio management is on the alignment of the program, project, and operations with the organization strategy and balancing risk to achieve strategic objectives. Portfolio managers manage the resources constraint and interface between the subordinate program, projects, and operational activities. The primary objective of portfolio risk management is to ensure portfolio components achieve the best possible success according to the organization's strategy and business model. From a risk perspective, this is accomplished through the balancing of positive and negative risk. Risk management controls help to achieve this in seamlessly integrating risk practices into the portfolio life cycle within all of the performance domain. This approach ensures the risk management become a natural part of portfolio management and helps achieve success in the value of delivery. The selecting, tailoring, implementing, and monitoring of particular control of given portfolio are parts of the oversight activity, section X.3.2 through 3.7, provide risk management control for portfolio risk management along with the examples of factors to consider the sum of the control. X3.2 X risk management control for portfolio strategic management. 
Table X, Trade as One Risk Management Control and Objectives for Portfolio Management, Control ID and Control Objective. Control ID, PFS, TR-1, Control Objective, Organization Strategic Risk Attitude and Appetite are regularly reassessed and reflected in the portfolio governance documents and other relevant portfolio process assets. PFSTR2 criteria for selections of portfolio components reflect the organization risk attitude and APT. PFSR STR3 risk related to correctness of the organizational strategy are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PFSTR does for risk related to the strategic changes within the organization that could potentially impact the way of the portfolio or its components are managed, identified, and analyzed are reflected in the portfolio governance good documents. PFSTR.5 risk related to the interpretations of the portfolio mission, vision, strategic goal, and objective are identified, analyzed, and act upon while developing or changing those elements. PFSTR6 organization in Environment is regularly monitored for opportunities and threat that could lead to change at the portfolio level critical success factor. For strategy, realizations are given special attention. In this con context, PFSTR7, when organizations, the portfolio risk related to the realizations of value expected for impacting program and resulting from the project within the portfolio are identified, analyzed, and acted upon. The following factor can consider when reassessing the organization strategy risk attitude and appetite that and the selections of portfolio components based on organizational attitude and appetite control PFSTR-1 and control PFSTR-2. Overall organization strategy risk attitude also considering its market, legal, and political context. Degree of uncertainty an organization is willing to accept in anticipations of reward, degree amount of volume of risk that an organization is willing to withstand and level of risk exposure above, which risk are addressed and below which risk may be accepted. The following factors could consider when identifying risk related to the correctness of the organization's strategy. Control PFSTR.3 experience and competence level of the team formulating the strategy. Reliability, applicability, and occurrence of model and data used for environmental analysis and forecasting. Clarity and completeness of strategy vision. Definition of strategic objectives. Comprehensive of the decision-making processes during strategy formulation and completeness of a strategic dimension taken into consideration. For example, as suggested by the balance scorecard technique. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to a strategic change within the organization and when identifying risk related to analysis execution and the change of portfolio mission, vision, and strategic goal and objectives. Control PFSTR.4 Organ Ongoing and plan change in the organization Ongoing and plan change in the organization's environmental, legal, market, and labor Portfolio change control system and its interface with project program and operational components Interface between other portfolio and in, in titles external and to the enterprise Enterprise, environmental factor, and organizational process assets, stakeholder engagement, and portfolio interface with the organizational enterprise risk management processes. The following factors should be considered when monitoring CSF, critical success factor, and opportunities, and threat, PFSTR.6, new technologies, materials, and tools. Availability of new types of increase amount of resource, change in political market, financial or legal environment, and balancing the opportunities and threat.
The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to realizations of value contribution expected from program, project, and operations within the portfolio. Accuracy and continued applicability of the portfolio because case and the subordinate components business case. Linkage between portfolio value delivery and achievement of strategic objectives and linkage between the across any other portfolios and the managed portfolio. X3.3 risk management control for portfolio governance. Table X3-2 risk management control and objectives for portfolio governance. Control ID PFGOV. PFGOV.1 Control Objective Risk Related to Portfolio Governance Structure, Policies, and Procedure are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PFGOV.2 Risk Related to the Assignment of Particular Individual to Key Governance Rule with the Portfolio are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio. PFGOV3 audit conducted as part of portfolio governance are based on risk analysis in order to ensure the right focus and minimize impact on portfolio components. PFGOV4 audit report are used as an input for portfolio and components level risk identification. PFGOV government 5 audit conducted as part of portfolio governance are performed according to agreed standby by qualified personnel independent from the portfolio and components management role. PFGOV6 risk related to the interface of the portfolio governance structures and policies and procedure with the enterprise risk management processes are identified and active managed through the entire portfolio life cycle. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to portfolio governance structures and policies and procedure. The portfolio governance structure are complexity, clearness of accountability, level of interdependencies, integrations with other structure within the organization, and degree key stakeholder representation. For portfolio policies and decision-making processes, complexity, transparency, involvement of key stakeholder, fairness, time to make decision, and quality mechanism. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to assignment of particular individual to key governance rules within the portfolio control. A. Competence, competencies, level of power, positions in organization, reputation, availability, and shared and conflicting interest. The following factors should be considered when planning and staffing audit as part of portfolio governance is competency of the audit entity, willingness of a stakeholder to accept audit result, applicability of audit result to portfolio and portfolio components processes, and applicability of audit result to enterprise risk management processes. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to the interface of portfolio governance structure and policies and procedure with enterprise risk management process governance process are defined by enterprise risk management applicability of enterprise risk management to specific portfolio processes and actions and linkage between portfolio governance and management processes with senior management and enterprise risk management X3.4 Risk Management Control for Portfolio Capacity and Capability Management. Table X-3 Risk Management Control and Objectives for Portfolio Capacity and Capability Management. Control ID PFCAP1. Control Objective Risk Related to the Impact of the Portfolio on Other Activities of the Organization and its Partner are Identified and Expected. It actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. Control ID PF Cap 2. Risk related to the, to the other activities of the organization and its partner that impact the portfolio are identified and actively managed 
throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 3, risk related to availability and performance of key human capital are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 4, risk related to availability and, and stability of key financial capital are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PCAF 5 risk, PF Cap 5 risk related to availability and fit for use of the key assets are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 6 risk related to the availability and development of the key intellectual capital are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 7 capacity required to manage risk at the portfolio and its component level is regularly identified, monitored, and whether needed, increase or reduce to maintain the optimal level. PF, PF Cap 8 risk related to the culture of the organization and its partner are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 9 risk related to the structures of the organization and its partner are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 10 risk related to key processes within the organizations are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 11 whether partner partners or suppliers play a significant role in providing portfolio capacity risk related to their involvement or identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. PF Cap 12 portfolio program and project performance report together with a KPI within the organizations are used to identify risk and recognize their potential impact on portfolio capacity and capability as early as possible. PF Cap 13 when optimizing portfolio capacity risk related to the cap realizations of value expected from the impacted program and resulting from project within the portfolio are identified, analyzed, and act upon. The following factor should be considered when identifying risk related to both the impact on the portfolio on the other activities of the organization and its partner the risk related to other activities of the organization and its partner that impact on the portfolio, a strategic plan of the organization and its partner, KPI within the organization and its partner, utilization level organization and partner's resources, components within the partner portfolio that could impact the involvements of the partner. Oh. The organization components realization governance across the enterprise management interface between portfolio management enterprise between portfolio and senior management dealing with complexity across organization structure dealing with the product services or capability related complexities as part of portfolio components processes and integrations of operations with project and program actions within and external of the portfolio. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to availability and performance of the human capital control PF Cap 3. Opportunities and threat. Opportunities, learning, new skills, personal growth, promotion, and development of successor. Threat, geographical distribution, cultural differences, learning curves, and availability of the key talent and job market com competition. The following factor should be considered when identifying risk related to availability and performance of the capital, financial capital, control PF cap for currency rate chains, availability of cash at certain moment in time, timing, and result of decision by key stakeholder providing financial capital, financial conditions of the key stakeholder providing financial capital and changing credit availability of key stakeholder providing financial capital. The following factor should be considered when identifying risk related to the availability of fit for use of the key assets control PF Cap 5. Other users are priorities of their assignment, 
procedure of sh sharing with uh, with other user avail avail availability fit for use and learning curves the following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to availability and development of key intellectual cap capital control p cap 6 development of unique intellectual capital that could lead to competitive advantage protections of intellectual capital example patient information security and use of intellectual capital to be obtained additional benefits example selling license the following types of risk management related activities should be considered when analyzing the capacity required to manage risk at the portfolio and its components level risk identification analysis and monitoring at the portfolio level responses to risk escalated from components to the portfolio level responses to risk identified at the portfolio level and responses to a known event that might occur for the portfolio and its components the following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to the culture of the organization and its partner pf cap 8 decision making culture way of working cooperation style and reporting culture and power distance the following factor should be considered when identifying risk related to the structures of the organization and its partners control pf cap 9 locations of the key portfolio governance and management rules with the organization structure clarity of the key decision making rules conflict and common objectives between the portfolio rules and other rules within the organization clarity of ownership of the key resources and integration between the portfolio and operations divisions and rules the following processes area should be considered when identifying risk related to the key processes within the organization control pf captain strategic planning and decision making high level planning of operation resource allocation procurement and human resource management the following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to the involvement of the partners and supplier control p if cap 11 strategic directions of their development ability to provide competitive ad advantage access to talent and intellectual property stability ability to scale mutual and conflicting objectives cooperations potential and conflict with organizations internal structure and alternative supplier for product and services the following indicators should be considered from the risk perspective when analyzing portfolio program and project performance report together with kpi within the organization resource ut utilization delivery velocity cost and scheduled performance turnover ratio resource and the service lead times amount of open sales lead and lead conversion ratio the following should be considered when identifying analyzing and responding risk associated with optimizing portfolio capacity to realize value control pick up 13 pf cap 13 balancing of portfolios project program and operation function balancing of related opportunities and threat and relationship of program benefits or program project deliverables to portfolio strategic objectives supporting the devil delivery of value of the enterprise x 3.5 risk management control for portfolio stakeholder engagement X table x dash three risk management control and objective for portfolio stakeholder engagement control id pfstq1 control objective risk retire related to key portfolio stakeholder are regularly identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle pfstq2 decisions to engage certain stakeholder at the portfolio program or project level are evaluated from the risk response pf is take three risk appetite attitude and threshold of key portfolio stakeholder are assessed regularly whenever there are difference between the individual factor 
ju just listed and the corresponding organization factor related risk are identified and actively manage PFS key for potential interactions and conflict of interest among key portfolio stakeholders are, are taken into considerations within identifying risk. PFS TK5 risk related to the escalated approach to analyze, categorize, and grouping the stakeholder are identified and addressed when planning portfolio stakeholder engagement. PFS TK6 risk related to selection, selected communication technique and related communication infrastructures are identified and act, actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. <coughs> PF is sticky seven. Risk related to the scope, frequency, and form communications of portfolio level are identified and actively managed throughout the entire portfolio life cycle. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to key portfolio stakeholder control. PF is sticky one. Risk appetite, attitude, and threshold. Interest align or conflicting with portfolio objectives, personal view, and preference. Areas of accountability and relative objectives. Impact of portfolio beliefs on the stakeholder objectives. Level of decision and power. Ability to influence the other stakeholder. Stakeholder culture training, educational experience. Stakeholder bias and trust between stakeholders. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to decision to engage certain stakeholder in the portfolio program or project level control PF is sticky to stakeholder ability to influence portfolio capacity and capability, ability to engage and manage given stakeholder at the portfolio or components level, opportunities and threat from dealing with a given stakeholder at the portfolio level and opportunities and threat from dealing with given stakeholder at the component level. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to disconnect between the individual key stakeholder and organizational risk appetite attitude and threshold control PFS TK3. Interest and goals of the stakeholder and organization key concern of the stakeholder and organizations key opportunities of the stakeholder and organizations, potential stakeholder strategies to mitigate threat, introducing of the portfolio that are un unacceptable by them, potential stakeholder strategies to exploit their opportunities related to the portfolio that are not taken care or by portfolio components. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to potential interactions and conflict of interest among key portfolio stakeholder control PFS TK4 shared and conflicting objectives existing and potential conditions and personal conflict. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to the selected approach to analyze, categorize, and group stakeholder control PFS TK5 accuracy and accuracy of stakeholder related data. Accuracy and completeness of analytical technique, ability to adequate, address our key stakeholder, impact of assumptions and impact of biases. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to the selected communication technique and related communication infrastructure, control PF, is TK6. Ability to trans transmit certain forms of information, example, visual, sound or text, noise level, traceability of information, authentication level, familiarity of stakeholder to use, and required technique and related technology, reliability and availability of required technology, stakeholder access to the required technique technology and stakeholder culture, and communication preference. The following factors should be considered when identifying risk related to the scope frequency and form of the communications at the portfolio level control PFS TK7, stakeholder culture and communication processes, stakeholder training, education and experience, 
stakeholder critical capabilities to achieve, to receive, analyze, and respond to communication, stakeholder bias, management and governance approach, and trust between the stakeholder. This is the end of page 52 to 53. 52 to 100. 102. 52 to 102. Of the project manage of the project of risk management for portfolio program and project for the next continuation page 103 to 150 plus thank you continuations of uh, risk management Page 52 to 194, paragraph 4.6, Plan Risk Response. The plan risk response process determines the effective response action that are appropriate for the priority 